It's clear tonight, so I'm going to be taking a picture of the Pleiades, or also known as the Seven Sisters. It's in open star cluster with some reflection nebulosity next to the stars. I believe it's the nearest star cluster to us in the sky, and it's in the constellation Taurus, which is near Orion, and this is like the perfect time of year for the Pleiades. So right now I've got this, uh, the table and chairs out here, and I've got all the other rest of the stuff gathered on the patio. I'm about to bring it out here. There should be no moon tonight. It will be we're pretty close to new moon, so the moon will not be a problem. And because of that, I chose the Pleiades since um, it's a reflection nebula, and it requires to be shot in broadband with red, green, blue filters. Come up with some more random facts. This will be the second time actually I photographed the Pleiades. The first time was, I believe, December 2020, and the picture did not turn out very well. I think it was, I think the moon was out that night. So we'll see what we can do with no moon this time. And of course, I'm like 20 times better now. So it's 43 degrees right now. Not too bad. It's gonna get down to 32 a bit later, but. Um, which I should be all set up by then, so I won't have to deal with the cold for too long. I think I saw that the dew point tonight is 28 at 10, and the 10 p.m. will be 32 degrees. And that's a bit close, so I'm gonna put a few heaters on just to be safe. I don't want what happened last time to happen again. So that should take care of that. So here's the telescope, um, it's the Zenith Star 61 going into the uh, flat 61 into the filter wheel with the RGB filters in it, into the monochrome camera at the back, and we got the guide scope on top. Okay, I've just about got everything out there now. I'm carrying the last of it. Unfortunately, my camera died, so I couldn't record finishing setting up, but I did get everything set up and started the sequence. I put a delay on it because it wasn't quite risen yet, so I put a delay on it and had it start, and I'm coming back up here, and it should have started already, so let's see. Looks like it did start, and I don't see any Pleiades. Okay, the plan is finally starting. The filter wheel wouldn't work, so I took it inside, we looked at it, and somehow a wire had broken, so we soldered it back on real quick. And now I put it back in, and the first exposure 
is going on the Pleiades. I need to go plug in the dew heaters. They're on the camera. I just need to plug them in. I don't plug them in yet because when I do plug them in, they, I guess they suck a lot of power and so the mount doesn't slew properly. So I'll go ahead and plug those in. So I had the plan set to go pretty much all night. It looks like they're gonna go behind the trees around 3 to 4 a.m. But that's still about nine, eight, nine hours of data. So I'm happy with that. So I'm just waiting here for the first exposure to come in so that I can make sure it's okay and then go inside because it is cold out here. Okay, first exposure just came in. Let's take a look. Looks good, there's not too much nebulosity, but I wasn't expecting any. The nebulosity should show through on the blue filter. I'm not gonna wait another 10 minutes for that, but I will definitely check in a little later to make sure that everything is going good. All right, this is a few days later now, and the night of imaging was very successful. The Pleiades did end up going behind the trees around four to five a.m., so I did have to scrap about the last 10 exposures on each filter. But still, I got 28 five minute exposures on each filter. So that's 84 total exposures, which ends up being seven hours of total exposure time. Earlier I mentioned that I had taken a photo of the Pleiades back in December 2020. And here's the photo on screen right now. And there is a dramatic difference between the one I took two years ago and the one that you're about to see. When I took this picture, it was a full moon. And back then I didn't realize that it's pointless to shoot broadband during a full moon because the moonlight is just going to wash out your image completely. So this time with the new moon allows a lot more of the nebulosity and the fainter details to be picked up. And another thing of course is that I have improved my processing and editing skills uh, dramatically since then and I'm sure that is also a big part of why the image is so much better. I'm very happy with how this image turned out and after this time lapse finishes I'll show you the photo and I hope you like it.